David Markarian here, inventor of the Dynaram Motion Soft Tissue Injury Evaluation System from Myovision. I developed the technology under a grant from the NIH after working with Surface CMG at NASA Ames Research Center. So what is the problem? Well, what do you do when you have patients that are in pain, yet traditional measures appear normal? Finally, there's a way to prove pain and injury which goes beyond these traditional tools. It is estimated that approximately 40% of those who demonstrate normal ROM or normal MRI are actually in pain and experiencing muscle guarding, a natural response to this pain. Finally, there is a technique which is able to document objectively this muscle guarding and pain. This meta-analysis published by the University of Michigan established that by adding dynamic SEMG to ROM measures, sensitivity and specificity increased. Based upon proven EKG technology, the device essentially becomes a voltmeter for objectively documenting levels of muscle guarding, which aids in properly documenting soft tissue cases. So how does it work? We're attaching EKG electrodes about the spine, measuring levels of muscle activity on left and right sides. The left lumbar is in blue. We're graphing our muscle activity measurement, dynamic EMG up here. The right lumbar is in red. So here the patient goes bending in a flexion, muscle shut off, the flexion relaxation response, and they fire again to return to neutral. Our range of motion is graphed down here with our endpoint range in the center. But the key is we're graphing the quality of motion by doing this. Here you can see we're graphing range of motion out at the bottom and the muscle response simultaneously. That's what makes the tool unique is that you're able to tell not only how far they bent, but is there a muscle guarding response in addition. So let's look at the difference between a normal and an abnormal. So here's a normal dynamic EMG along with range of motion. The range is normal in this situation. Patient bends in a flexion. Again, muscles shut off. This is a flexion relaxation response. When you look at an abnormal case, even though their range of motion is technically endpoint normal, there's two things that are wrong. One, there's clearly a muscle guarding response, which is abnormal. Left and right sides both fire tremendously in this motion, which is not a normal response. Secondly, you can see the quality of motion that they're actually bouncing as they bend forward. It irritates them so they have difficulty, and you can see the jitter in their motion. It's been established by the AMA guides that there's a 5 to 8% impairment based upon the 5th edition. Let's take an example of a yoga instructor in an accident. Ram is, goes from, let's say, extreme to normal. That doesn't help you very much in a case where a, a yoga instructor is in trouble. So what we do is we measure muscle activity in combination with range of motion to establish the injury. For the cervical spine, we're attaching electrodes to the cervical paraspinals and the SCMs. Here you can see we're doing a lateral flexion and we're graphing the range of motion at the bottom, the cervical paraspinals up here at the top, and the SCMs in the center. So when you perform a lateral flexion, one side should fire and not the other. In a rotation, you can see as you rotate, muscles fire. We're looking at this, the CPs up here and the SCMs down here. So there's three cases you're going to find. The first one is you're going to see a normal situation, and that's where a person performs a left or right rotation or lateral flexion. It makes no difference. And the cervical paraspinals on the left, the blue line, fires the right side does not. If the right side fired, that's the opposite side saying it hurts, muscles would fire, that's a guarding response. When you see a big separation between left and right sides, that's a lack of guarding. And you'll see that in a rotation example, the left side fires, the right SCM fires to stabilize. So you're pulling with the left and you're firing the right SCM, balancing out the motion. A moderate would be firing where the muscles are close together, but they're not firing the same. So this is an example of a moderate. It's something between here and here. In a severe case, this is severe guarding. Left and right sides fire simultaneously. It only makes sense. A range of motions measured down here. This is our cervical paraspinals and our SEMs. And in this case, the SEMs are normal. The CPs are abnormal. But this can establish that there's injury. And range of motion in this case is also normal. Let's look at an actual case. This is the endpoint ROM versus DynaROM motion SEMG. Endpoint ROM, you're just measuring range of motion. Dynaram, we have electrodes attached. So let's go on. In the endpoint, this is the IME's results. This is an actual court case. You can see the patient had 52 degrees of motion. We performed the exact same test, but we used the Dynaram instead. We also found 52 degrees of motion, but muscle guarding that existed. So this is an example of how you can, and this is a real case where you can actually see that muscle guarding determined this case. The result, and you compare it to a normal again, muscles are supposed to shut off inflection. You can see that this was crucial in coming to a decision. 
This case, which was offered at $0 originally, settled at 300000 If you look on page 45 in the AMA's book on range of motion, you'll see a picture of the Dynaron presented. Why is it there? According to the leading expert in range of motion, that it's brilliant because of the fact that it augments range of motion by assessing effort. How has it handled the scrutiny of the courts? The greatest challenge to date occurred in Florida, where the state of Florida removed Dynaron from the list of approved devices. The rule was challenged by myself and a doctor from Florida. The state of Florida was joined by over 300 insurers and 75 attorneys. We won in the Superior Court with the Supreme Court rejecting the appeal. There is now a statute in Florida requiring reimbursement for the exam. According to Judge Clevenger, it has achieved a level of medical acceptance as a valuable diagnostic tool for injuries of the spine and upper and lower back. What do insurers do to try to discredit this great tool and distract you from using it? The first false claim is that needle EMG is the only EMG. The paper they reference states on the first page in its disclaimer, this review does not comment on the use of surface EMG in diagnosis of central nervous system disorders or pain as an entity independent of nerve damage. Needle EMG is used to evaluate for nerve damage. Surface EMG is used to measure soft tissue injury. They are two separate tools. There is no argument there. And simply focused on this, you end up forgetting the value of the tool. The second most common false claim is that all SEMG is paraspinal scanning SEMG. As you already know, we're performing a motion test, which is functional. There's over 9,000 studies on it. But if they can keep you focused on believing there's only paraspinal scanning SEMG, which provides you with this back graph, then you actually are in a position where you cannot argue because there's very few studies on this. There's, there's plenty, but not as many as dynamic EMG. They know this yet they keep you attached to it, believing that there's all there is is prior spinal static EMG. All the policies that are written talk about this only, and they use the term static EMG, paraspinal scanning EMG. The point is, if you have a discussion about Dynaram EMG, it's a whole other discussion. Matter of fact, educated attorneys know how to destroy expert witnesses with this. And you can see in this particular case in Spokane, Washington, the expert wanted to talk about, the IME wanted to talk about static EMG. And that's talking about static EMG, isn't it? Yes. Okay. And did he do dynamic range of motion SEMGs? Correct. That's correct. And static. Because he wanted to talk about static only because you can argue it. The third false claim is that there are no control group studies. This is patently false. This study published in the Journal of Occupational Environmental Medicine found statistically significant differences between normal and chronic low back pain patients. The kicker? They used a myovision in the study, giving you instant credibility before a judge or jury. As the judge in Merit versus Department of Health pointed out, to have a CPT code for an exam makes it a valid test. We made the software so easy to use that you can actually use it in the courtroom. As an example, the software brings up the patient on the left and the ideal on the right so you can show the jury very clearly what an ideal looks like and what the actual patient looks like, making it clear that there's an injury if there is. What do experienced attorneys think? The myovision Donoran was crucial in settling this million dollar soft tissue case. Simply ask an attorney who's had direct experience with you, find out how they feel. One of the greatest byproducts of the use of Dynaram technology is that the stress on the patient is reduced significantly as those without broken bones to show are oftentimes viewed as faking. To be able to show friends, family, and their attorneys that the scientific tool proves that the pain they feel is real is crucial to their mental health. And the exam costs only $300, which is extremely cost effective. Wouldn't it be helpful to know if you have a good case up front and win the other 40%? The old paradigm was opinion versus opinion. The new paradigm is data versus opinion, and data wins over opinion 99% of the time. We live in a data-driven society. Any questions? Please contact me at david at myvision.com or 206-357-6501. Thank you.